Go. You're on. Go ahead. Sweet. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Welcome to our first live uh, Q and A here at Dog to Dog. Uh, I'm Scott, uh, master trainer here. This is my uh, partner, colleague, and other master trainer, Darcy, with you. Um, we we uh, we've done this for a long, long time. Um, I've, uh, it'll be, it was 36 years for me in March. So, um, we, we thought we'd address things that we hear all the time. Uh, we, we do, uh, group lessons. We do, uh, private in-home lessons. We do, uh, emotional support dog therapy dog lessons. We do detector dog work. Um, I, I come from the bomb dog trade. Um, I was an explosive detection, uh, dog instructor and judge and deployed. Um, all over for, for many, many years, for, for over 20 years. So um, our training is different a little bit. Um, we thought for a second right here while we're talking, we would just really quickly address uh, some of the problems that we see. Um, one, of the, one of the first things that uh, occurred uh, with our partnership is people will ask, um, uh, you know, how, how did you and Darcy, you know, come together? How, how, I mean, how do you even do that? How do you become a dog trainer, whatever? Well, Darcy was a student um, many, many, many years ago, um, three times. And her experience was uh, that other dog trainers weren't what she hoped. So I'm going to have her chat for just a second. Just talk about that really quick, about what happened there and uh, um, what, what the difference so was. In the Zoom, I think there's a chat, uh, a way for you to chat. And if you have questions, I do have questions already in from um, Kristen and from Bailey. So if, if other people have questions, uh, you can type them in the chat um, part of Zoom. So um, feel free to ask questions. Um, but I had a little Karen Terrier um, and I had hired a dog trainer um, and he was most unpleasant. Um, and some <laughs> of his ways were very interesting. Um, and I had him come two or three times and then Samantha, which most of you know, um, she was probably eight or nine at the time. And she looked at me and she said to me, he's never coming back. And I was like, yeah, right. He's never coming back <laughs> kind of a thing. Then I hired somebody else and it was on the whole other end of the spectrum where, um, it was just, like I said, if, if he was pretty harsh, it was the other end of the spectrum. And with the, having a terrier, those things were not working for me. So it doesn't mean that they don't work for some dogs or whatever, but for me personally, they just weren't working. Um, and then I ended up finding Scott and he came into my house. We sat on the floor and he started to tell me about my dog, my little Karen Terrier. And she was, you know, a sassy little thing. So then I had a Wheaton Terrier and then I got a kitten and the Wheaton Terrier wanted to play with the kitten too roughly. Uh, then I had some Chihuahuas come in, you know, and then I had a Staffordshire Terrier come in. And over all this time, it's just been a building of my knowledge because he was telling me, um, you know, what, what we call the drives, instincts and character traits. So, um, that's kind of how I eased into it. And as we were doing a lesson one time, he's like, do you want to do this and be a professional? Um, it wasn't really something I'd ever considered, even though I love animals um, a ton. I'm kind of crazy that way. Uh, but my answer was just a quick yes. Like I, <laughs> it just, it, and that's where kind of we began, um, you know, our professional and him being my mentor and teacher uh, relationship. So that's the Sweet. very short version. Yeah, very short. <laughs> um, it's what she saw 
was the result of a system of uh, canine psychology that is that was founded in the West German police, uh, the, the, the best dog training in the free world at the time. This was a long time ago. Um, I have done this forever. Um, I took it out into the public uh, because I, it, I didn't like the fact that it wasn't in the public and the people were confused. And there is a lot of inaccurate, um, unsubstantiated uh, stuff that's out there with dog training. Um, some dog training works with some dogs, not with others. A couple of myths that we wanted to spell right off. All right. You can train any dog. Dogs are trainable. Um, I don't care if it's a 250 pound Mastiff. I don't care if it's a three pound Chihuahua. They're canids and they will train. But you have to, all dogs are different and all people are different. So, coining a phrase, uh, you know, I was a Star Trek geek for whatever, oh, what was called infinite diversity and infinite combinations. But as long as you're founded on truth, you're fine. Okay, that's, the, the, you'll, be, you'll be okay to go forward. So usually when, when you guys give us questions, uh, we're gonna be very open with this. There is no question that is dumb. There is no question, I don't want you guys to ever feel like, oh my heck, you know, that's, I can't, they're, they're, I don't want to say this because it makes me feel weird. Don't do that, okay? We're here to help you, um, and we look forward to it very much. Um, we, we not only love your dogs, we love you, we really do. Uh, it's our desire that you live joyfully with your dog. Um, behind me, we have our credo, half which, it. with half of it, which is this. Obedience is law. Okay, it, it's not some, you know, horrible thing. Obedience is just law, it's just pack law. Law brings order. Order brings confidence. Confidence brings trust, and trust brings joy. Um, we, we do not preach perfection. There, there's, that's not possible. There are people who compete um, I used to tune dogs for, for people that were, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've got to go and compete in this obedience trial. I've got to go compete in this working trial. Um, man, Scott, I've, I've let my dog slide, you know, so what, what do I do? And, um, we tune them to an unnatural state because they're going to be competing. They're going to be judged, right? You guys don't, you don't have that. That's your art. We have a couple of things we say. No perfection, but perfect partnership. Okay, we want your dog your way. All right, let me say that again. Your dog your way. And so people say, oh my gosh, I can't believe you let your dog on the furniture. I can't believe you, you let your dog on the bed. I can't believe you play. You can't play tug of war with your dog and stuff. It'll make him aggressive. I mean, I could go on and on, guys. Uh, that's a crock. Uh, the only thing we as your trainers would ever ask you is, can you make it stop? Will the dog get off the bed? Will the dog get off the furniture? Will the dog stop? rough play when you're done. If the answer is no, then we have a, a, an assignment, right? That, that's our job is to help you, okay? So there is no dog that's too old. Puppies being puppies from zero to 12 weeks, um, we teach a, a puppy seminar that is designed to keep you out of trouble while they're in this growth stage, give them a very positive experience, but keep you from getting into some habits that are gonna really be a booger when they start teenage behavior, okay? Which starts at about 16 weeks, depending on the breed, and goes for about six or seven or eight months, something you did in six to eight years, all right? That's, I mean, they're gonna do that in eight months, and so they'll change almost every day, and that's, that is what we specialize in, is fitting the dog like a puzzle piece into your family so that you have perfect partnership. Okay, now, questions about us, questions about 
experiences, questions about, you know, have you ever seen this? What, what breed of, they're all welcome. They're welcome. We can only address so many. Um, we're hoping this grows whole bunches. We would ask you to register for us um, so that we, we have some of your information. We can get these things out to you. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what we offer in training kind of at the end of our discussion here. Um, I would like to address, I see some of you are chatting. Um, we, we may have to set, this is our first one, so we apologize. We're, we're going to have to have someone probably watching those for us on a, set, on a second screen or whatever, uh, but whatever. Let, let the, the, the two questions that we have, uh, and we'll, we'll look at some others if we have some time, but this doesn't surprise me at all. We have what I call the big three. Um, which is jumping up, barking, and the jumping up includes all of your guests and your front door behavior and children and all that stuff. And then food or kids with food. The, those tend to be variations on that theme. That, that's what we hear a whole bunch about. So these questions are, how do I get my dog to stop jumping up on people and things? begging behavior. How do I get my dog to not be all over people when they come to my house? Okay, first thing first. Okay, what we always want to do and what we do is say why. Guys, you, you, you have to. You, you have to know why the dog. The dog is not a furry human, right? One of your biggest mistakes is to consider the dog a furry little person. It's actually one of the most remarkable creatures on earth, I think. They're a gift to humanity, but they are not a furry human. Um, they're alien to you in many ways. Um, their, their eyes are not their primary sense. Their nose is their primary sense. So they, their world is a river of chemical data. All right? So why, let's ask the question right off the bat. Why does the dog jump up? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Darcy knows the answer. That's good. Go ahead. Uh, dogs uh, don't ever do anything for no reason. So uh, when they jump up, people go, oh, uh, he's excited, he's this, he's that. Well, he wants you to touch him. So remember, we talk about the three heroines, your we eyes. Have Describe the three heroines. Yeah, the, the, this is not a drug-related <laughs> Q&A, okay? This is our, yeah, okay. Yeah, so the three heroines or three drugs to a dog is your voice, your touch, and your eyes. So dogs are really great trainers in their own right, and they will kind of push buttons to see, you know, what they can get from you. So when they jump up, they're saying, touch me. Yes, touch me. Now, let me underline this, okay? We read the, why do we call those the three heroines? People think it's funny and stuff. It just kind of morphed. But your dog is addicted to you. That is what makes them, who else in your life, guys? I mean, I'm sure there are. I'm sure there's people. Um, maybe, I hope so that are addicted to you. You know, a lot of moms will tell me, you know, they hear, ma, 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 yeah, 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 kind of addicted to you. That's what the dog's doing, by the way, when it's jumping, ma, 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 you know, touch me. Um, however, you are the sun coming up in the morning for your dog. There, there, there's no way around that. Um, it is what gives us the joy, it's what allows the dog to be, a therapy platform, we would call it, or an emotional support platform, a dog. Um, I don't pretend, after 36 years, I, I don't pretend to understand exactly why that works, but I can tell you it does. And for a lot of people, you know, the dog never comes off, you are the sun coming up in the morning, mom. And regardless if you're 10 minutes, right? How many of you have seen this, right? You're gone for 10 minutes. The dog, you know, oh my God, I thought you were gone forever, I'm dying of loneliness or whether it's, you know, all day or whatever, when you come back into the dog's life, 
they are going to attempt to reconnect. So we're, we're, we're gonna address this question first as it relates to you and your family. One way that the dog connects, probably the, the warmest and, and the fastest way is with touch. Um, and so when you come home, there was a lot of stuff out there. Just ignore your dog. Yeah, but the dog is tearing my clothing and stuff. You know, when I come in, it's scratching my leg, whatever. No, no, just ignore it. The dog's trying to get attention. The dog is trying to reestablish pack, to reestablish the bond that was fractured when you left. Now, those of you, as we work stay and stuff with some of our students, you, you see this even two feet away. You know, the dogs, what are you doing? How stupid is this? You know, you're, you're sitting on the floor with a lap. Why am I not in your lap? That's ridiculous, you know. But in order to have the law, the restrictive measures we have to have given certain circumstances, that's the deal. Okay, so um, touch your dog. You don't have to make it some huge, massive thing unless you want to, but touch your dog when you come back in contact. Every single morning, um, I have an emotional support dog. That's what I call him. Um, he is a three-legged American bulldog named Trike. <laughs> I named him that. And um, every single day, one of my rituals is, and I will tell you, this makes me feel better. It doesn't matter what it's like when I get out of bed, whatever. I go over, I open his door to his crate, his kennel, and I spend about 20 seconds scratching his left ear. Why do I do that? Because he doesn't have a left hind leg. So he can't scratch it. So I scratch it and he moans. It's, it, it, I mean, to him, it's, it's beyond drugs. That's his, his and my time, it makes, me feel better because I touch him. Now, notice I choose when and how I touch him. All right. Um, nothing we ever teach you will stop loving, holding, touching, stroking, stroking queen right here with her dog. You know, she would keep the dog in her lap all the time if she could, but she can't. So that that is something that the dog really, really, really likes and will pursue. Okay, here's the human world, right? Dogs don't do doors or walls. Dogs do pee, all right? So in, in a dog world, a wild pack, you're gonna have a quarter of a mile of barrier that's full of urine and feces, you know, think chemical signatures, this is who's what, who's in heat, what's going on. But in our world, we have walls, and you have a door, and every living thing that's gonna come in comes through that door. So the dog focuses a whole bunch on what's happening there. And if your dog has a decent temperament, okay, if we don't have temperamental issues or neuroses or anything, um, they're, they're relatively friendly. They're very interested in contact with these creatures that you're allowing to come in through this opening. And they're, the, the humans are stupid, right? They, they, not, they don't try and sneak in, man, they make noise. Bing bong, knock, 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 knock. Bing bong, you know, whatever. And the dog lights up, right? You know, so my house, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then they run up and touch me. Talk to me, touch me, and we, it works. It, it doesn't matter, guys, how you're feeling. Okay, it really, it really doesn't, you know. Um, you're lecturing, right? Oh, oh my gosh, it's, he, won't, he, he won't hurt you. No, you know, he won't hurt you, blah, 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 you know. And the dog, remember the three heroines. Voice, touch, and your eyes. So you can be running your mouth, the dog doesn't do English, okay? You're looking at him, you're touching him, you're trying to pull him off, and the dog is, ha, 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 bring it on. I can't get it to stop. That's because obedience, okay, law, must be more pleasant than disobedience. 
breaking the law must be more unpleasant than the law, than obedience. It's kind of a dust statement, but we mix them up that's all the time. That that's, months, so they'll change. Right. <laughs> that's me again. How cool. All right. All right. Now, um, do you, do you, let's see. Um, we're going to talk, guys, to answer your question. How do I get my dog not to be all over people? Now, um, there are always two roads here. Um, one is much better than the other, but both can be effective. All right, there is reactive, okay, which means how do I do something in that moment to stop my dog from doing that? Well, here's, here's some of the challenges with that. You're not going to have a lot of carryover unless it's happening exactly the way it should every single time. That, how are you going to do that with friends and acquaintances and, you know, whatever? Okay, um, but there are ways, you know, that, that, that is, is something uh, we, we teach the, the, the glue, uh, you know, the, the tar, the dog jumps up, you catch the front paws. You have no intention of hurting the dog. Do not try and squeeze the paws. Just hold them firmly. Most dogs, nothing is 100%, guys. Okay, this, I mean, we would have to counsel with you if you this, whatever. But for the vast majority of dogs, they don't like it. They don't, this isn't what they looked for, for you to have the paws. And they'll start, <laughs> you know, whatever. They don't like it. Once that behavior starts, we're going to count to 10. Okay, one, two, 10. And then, ah, ah, I don't, and then you're going to say off and put the paws down. You're going to do it as many times you need to. Average, once. Hard-headed dog, stubborn. I, I mean, my heroin is my thing. You know, I got whatever. Twice, maybe. It works very, very quickly, but it's reactive. That means that the person that's being jumped on is the one that has to do this. That is not always the best option. What is the so, best option? So, I mean, like... Um, with some of these questions, like from Kristen and Bailey, um, I'll do those first. But when I'm doing stuff like that and I have a dog that has a behavior issue that I want to stop, I always will have the collar and the leash on the dog when I'm proximate to the animal. And especially young dogs, um, you know, because... Uh, you know, one of our uh, clients is saying that the puppy's jumping on people um, and things and trying to get the cat, um, you know, and jumping on the cabinets and things like that. Um, first, I always say there's too much freedom. Um, and what that means is if there's no way for you to be able to stop the unwanted behavior uh, other than grabbing the dog constantly, you're just actually rewarding the behaviors you you don't want so um you know if 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 even my older dogs are being a pill then i put the collar on the leash on they're dragging it around my house and i don't say much i will step on the leash and that way i can take the leash i can move the dog off the couch um you know and off the bed you know, from the door. or you know off the counters whatever um, you know, when people are coming into the house, like being um, that you're thinking about it before it happens. If you know people are coming into your house, collar and leash on the dog. Um, and again, this is a uh, beginning work. So there's other things we can do as, as we progress. But beginning work is then people are coming into the house. I know they're coming into the house. I have the dog on a collar and a leash. Um, we teach a principal to step down. And so if you know what that is, see, when in doubt, step your dog down. I will uh, not say much because remember, voice, touch, eyes is giving the dog stimulus and reward. I just want to be kind of like, that's weird. You're jumping on my people or that's weird. You're trying to jump, you know, and get towards my cats. And if I can just 
Um, I mean, and I, I had to do that with Gypsy at four months old. I had to do some, um, some you know, some very specific training with her because she's an Airedale Terrier. I mean, she comes out of working stock. I did not even want to open the door in her head that those cats of mine were her toys that she might accidentally kill. So um, be willing to put a collar and a leash on. It's a very simple way, but it will set you up for success because you're not just kind of, you know, constantly manhandling or shaking your finger and talking to the dog, if that makes any sense. Um, let's see. Let's talk about uh, what we call a training wedge. Okay, now there, there's, there's several questions that have come up here. Guys, that most of this um, is fundamentally because we have not, you, you, don't, you don't apply law. Now, you have to understand that um, I promise we promise you that this will work. Um, we work a whole bunch of stay command. We do not do stay the way a lot of people do. We do it the way I learned it, which is absolute all the time, no matter what marching band comes by with bratwurst, that's the deal. Okay, so the, 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 the allegory of food and noise and whatever, some of your chat questions here, all right, we got, uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for, for sending those in. They're wonderful questions. We've got one, all right, here, um, uh, that is when I walk past a fence with a dog, what do I do? Is it best to stop and try and get the dog? Not necessarily, okay? Um, why is my dog mouthing, biting? He doesn't do that with strangers, but with us. Your dog has one hand. It's on the front of his face. That is, that is play solicitation. Play, play drive, is the subconscious. You always have to remember that word. It's reflex. It is the subconscious compulsion to seek and maintain contact. Does it work? Chew, chew, chew. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it works well. Okay, so uh, we've got some others here. Um, how do I get my dog to, you know, your storm doors open, it's clear, so you've got a barrier the dog can see through, which is totally awesome, by the way. And here comes other dogs, people. Whoa, 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 the rolling bark, guard drive, subconscious compulsion to defend or delineate uh, territory using barking, biting, or growling. Okay, we're not gonna go into a big thing. I mean, if you guys wanted one, we would do a seminar on instinct drives and character traits. I would put that together for you. But knowing that, what's the answer? The answer is obedience. Okay, obedience isn't tricks. It, it's, it's not to impress your neighbor, although it will. Obedience is law. That is, the uh, proactive approach. So when we teach, we teach leave it, we teach stay with leave it. How do I stop this behavior? By being proactive, putting the law in place, and then layering the stimulus that's causing you issues into the dog. And that can be insane. My bomb dogs guys were psychotic. They were psychos. They did not make good pets, which was great for us because we rescued a bunch of them. And I'm looking for a dog. I could not keep the ball in the house at all. Uh, on bad days, he would lay by the garage door moaning because he knew that the, the, the ball was out in the garage. Okay. So um, stay before a bomb sweep is absolute just like all stay is. I don't care if you're a 10 month old baby or 18 month old baby or a toddler, whatever is walking around with a graham cracker or a sandwich or whatever, you know, there is never an excuse for the dog to spook food off of that child or off of guest plates or anything else. Well, how do we deal with that? 
hello, it tastes way different from what you're feeding me and it smells good. Well, law in a dog's pack prevents such things. Pack leaders don't tolerate that kind of behavior. You eat when it's your turn to eat, when we say that you're going to eat. Pack is a, a bond that humans don't understand very well. Sometimes you'll talk about people being tribal, families that are that way. My family has been called that. You know, that we're, we're uh, doesn't really matter how you feel about them as people, but their family. That's dogs live that way. When they pack up, it's all for one and one for all, even though guys, it's, it's a fantasy to think that, that, that all dogs get along all the time. Now, that is very strange to us. We see, Darcy and I see that all the time um, with dog parks, with, uh, we've been standing there teaching. Sam and I, uh, Darcy's daughter, who's a killer instructor herself, by the way. Um, we were sitting here talking to this guy on a, in a front yard and he's got his little dog out. He's come out of his house since it was a private in-home lesson. And we're sitting there talking to him. Uh, he's far away from here. So, you know, we were, he was really happy to, he travels all the time. He's very happy to see us reporting on what's going on. Here comes a neighbor. I didn't know this. It was a neighbor lady. But she's coming with her two dogs kind of running around off leash, whatever. And holy cow. They, I mean, we see it. They lock up on this guy's dog and they're coming. I thought, hey, you know, uh, you better pick your dog up. So he snatched the dog up, you know, whatever. And they're, you know, whatever. And there was no reaction from this person. And he kind of said something like, man, he was like, oh, well, that's really weird. You know, I thought all dogs liked each other. They do not. They do not. <laughs> they do not. Now, we do something called confidence and social immersion um, every Saturday. Uh, I have had several trainer friends of mine tell me that you're crazy. You know, well, I mean, what are you doing? bringing all these people and dogs together. You don't know them. You got new dogs coming in all the time. We know what we're doing. I control the atmosphere. Can you make every dog like every other dog? No, especially on our one question about on the other side of a barrier. See, because uh, there's many times if the barrier wasn't there, the dogs would sniff each other, whatever, and go about their business. But because there's a barrier, human, mine, no, mine, 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 you know, blah, 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 blah. that kind of thing. Uh, that, that kind of thing, guys, is something dogs do reflexively. So as, as, we, as we go forward and you talk about training, obedience, that is the platform that all things can be plugged into. The bomb dog, I got to work, got to work, dad, got to go, got to go, got to go, got to go. No, you must wait. Um, let's see. We've got, I think this only goes till 1045. So I'm going to like go through these questions. I have one um, uh, that they have a female Australian shepherd and you want to get another dog. Um, should I avoid another female? Um if I have a female dog and I'm looking, so first of all, I always look for temperament um, because, and, and we can talk about what that means um, with you in private, but um, getting a male dog for me would be preferable if I already have um, a female dog. So that's my answer for, for that one. Um, there's another one, my, uh, you thought uh, your dog was potty trained um, and you're finding pee in the house. Um, and do you need to start from scratch? So the first thing, uh, did you move? Did something happen or change in the house? And then um, is there a problem um, with your dog physio, uh, you know, with the physical part? So if you're not sure, I always get a vet to check that out. 
Um, and then um, we do crate training for potty training because that's confined bedding space. And so I will start um, by restricting the dog a bit. So collar and leash, the dog's with me. If my eyes come off the dog, I'll put it in the crate. Then when I take the dog out of the crate, I'll take the dog outside to go potty. Um, we do, um, we do do potty training, so that's something that we can help you with. But I, I start with restriction and making sure the dog's empty and that the dog is healthy. Let's, let's, um, we can't get to all of them. Um, we're going to do this twice a week. So okay, we'll, we'll be back Friday. And, and we have these questions, so we will continue to we'll, answer We'll start them. selecting them as, as there's more of you. Uh, many of you will have the same. Um, we just had a question come in from Manny. Uh, hi, Manny. Um, do we have online courses? Yes. Yes, we do. Now, Darce and I started online work years ago um, with students out of state. Um, we are going to, and we this current uh, COVID thing, the, the coronavirus deal, has really caused some issues. Well, people make a lot of jokes about being confined with their people, their children, but we know that the same thing can happen with all of a sudden you're there with your dog all the time. So we will answer questions, we'll provide um, opportunities in this. We will be offering an online course with a significant discount for the purposes of uh, helping folks that have some time. You know, um, I, I envision it being at least weekly, simply because people have the time right now for a little bit that we can get your dog under the law. It's fun, our students like it. It's, uh, we do not use a lot of force, it, it's not necessary, dogs don't hit. They don't even know what that is. So using who we are, yes, we will be. Our phone number is 801-410-8126. That will take you to Dars. Um, uh, she's more than willing to talk to you about uh, the options you have, but we will be doing some online training. Again, Please feel free to register. We will keep everything confidential. Uh, we have a list of students that's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of long, uh, uh, of names long from the time that we've been. We love every one of you. And uh, we've had wonderful experiences. Um, I would be interested, if I could take just a second here. Um, we have gone into veterinary clinics. We've gone into, I, I did this for uh, the Utah Association of Animal Control. Um, yeah. Um, if you are interested in a drives, instincts, and character traits in what this whole structure is, shoot us a text or an email. Let, let me know, will you? Because we'll, we'll put that together for you. Um. I think we have time for one more question. There's one about how do I keep my dog um, um, out of the garden? Um, they like to dig. Well, so one of the things is uh, I first ask how much time is the dog spending outside um, unsupervised? So there's a few other things I would need to know. So you can always call and chat with me um, on that uh, phone number that Scott um, did 801-410-8126, um, but um, just turning your dog out and not knowing what they're doing. If I let my Airedale Terrier uh, out my backyard unsupervised, she would, well, has, she has you know, not on my watch, but anyway, <laughs> um, she clipped down a tree, you know, that was fun for her. Um, but it's just like they're unsupervised, and I think of them at like two-year-olds, so that's the first thing, like how much time are, are they spending outside un unsupervised? Um, there's ways we can uh, help you uh, train and figure that out. But the first thing is, is just like, I keep an eye on my dogs. And if they are doing something I don't want them to do, um, I make a yard leash sometime. Um, and it is like 
10 to 12 feet long. I put it on the dog when they go outside. So if I see my dog starting to dig, see the very first thing I would do is go step on that leash and drag them back in the house uh, and put them in the crate or whatever you want to do. But it's like, I'm not going to let the freedom to just to continue to um, destroy my yard, if that makes sense. So we can talk more in depth about that in um, private. So anyway. We'll, we'll be picking questions at random. As, as we do this, we'll be back online live uh, Friday morning at yeah, 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock. So next week. Oh. Next Wednesday. We, we, oh, next Wednesday. Not next Friday. Next Wednesday. I'm so oh. sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Next Wednesday, 10 o'clock in the morning. Hop on. Feel free to send your questions in beforehand. We'll get to everything we can. We'd like to eventually do some breed spotlight and stuff with this. Um, so question, any questions you have, uh, but you're, you give, give us a little while to, to get to what we have. Love you guys. Love your dogs. We'll see you next time. All right. Have a good week. See you next week.